Hello everyone, my name is Demismu and this is my assistant the foot. Today we'll talk about Plato's theory of the soul. Last time we discussed Plato's understanding of knowledge, showing different types of objects that can be known and levels of knowing. Now we turn to the knower itself, the soul. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a like. The soul in Plato is the answer to the question, who acquires knowledge? All of us are endowed with a soul, but just like with the objects of knowledge and the types of knowing, there is a hierarchy of souls depending on their level of enlightenment. First of all, the soul is distinguished from the body, and indeed the soul both precedes the body and outlives it. Plato believed that the soul was immortal, that it becomes imprisoned in the body and that it gets reincarnated into another body after death. Depending on your level of knowledge, your soul will get reincarnated into different kinds of living beings. If your soul does not get a high enough score on the knowledge during your lifetime, in other words, if you do not acquire knowledge, you might get reincarnated as an animal. You had let your body decide your life. So according to Plato, your soul fits better into that of an animal. But if you learn and acquire enlightenment, you will yet again be reincarnated into a knowledgeable human. Remember, the soul, being immortal, traversed the world of forms already, so it knows everything already. The only question is, will you remember this knowledge during your life, or will you let everything remain forgotten? The more you forget and go further from the forms during your lifetime, the closer your soul will be to that of the animals. So after that, you don't get sent to heaven or hell, you remain on earth, changing only your body. But how are souls judged? Well, according to Plato, the soul is composed of three parts. Why did he think this? He observed that it is possible to desire something and at the same time show opposition to this desire. For example, if you drink beer and want to continue drinking, but then you say to yourself, let's slow it down, you would still want to drink more, but are sober enough not to go overboard. So Plato reasoned, the same thing can hardly do two opposing things if it were just one. Therefore, the soul is not one. It obviously has at least two parts. The first part, which wants something, is the desiring one, which Plato calls the appetitive part. This is the part that simply desires all kinds of things, the part that drives you towards something, whether it is drink, food, money, pleasure or something else. The second part, however, is the one that says, wait, let's think this through. This is of course reason, the part which takes consequences into account, the part that examines and argues, the part that analyzes and decides what is best to do. So desire on the one hand, reason on the other. Plato represents the soul in the image of a flying chariot to explain this. The soul is a chariot in disguise. Reason is the charioteer, the one who leads and gives direction, whereas the appetitive part is represented by a winged horse, a dark horse, one that chases blindly behind whatever it finds desirable. The dark horse is a wild, untamed animal, and reason must exert its power over it. The dark horse leads you to drink more beer, but the charioteer says, no, you had enough. But there is also a third part of the soul. Plato calls this the spirited part. The spirited part of the soul signifies higher emotions, not low desires like the dark horse, but the nobler emotions such as anger at injustice, courage, indignation against evil and the desire to overcome challenges. And this part is represented by a winged white horse. The term spirited part of the soul would then mean like a high spirited noble horse filled with energy and determination. This horse always listens to reason and is flying in the direction given by it. It is a tamed, noble animal. Plato also gives another image to represent the three parts of the soul. Reason is in the head, it is the part that thinks. The spirited part of the soul is in the heart, where courage and determination reside. The appetitive part is like the belly, always wanting something. And like every body, every soul is composed of these three parts, meaning every human has all three. What kind of a person you end up being is dependent on how these parts of the soul interact with one another. More precisely, it is determined by which part of the soul is the dominant one. Plato gives the example of love to explain this. There are different types of love depending on which part of the soul dominates in you. The most immediate and natural type of love is of course the bodily love. You are attracted to someone and you are driven by your sexual desire. The dark horse is predominant here and if we let him continually fly on his way, it will not fly high but remain close to the material realm. Sexual love will prevail. For Plato, this kind of love will remain only that, the love of the body, no more. But if the charioteer steers the white horse firmly and the two manage to subdue the dark horse, leading it toward greater heights, the desire for the body can be diverted to something more, the love of knowledge. 
And here the charioteer fully controls both horses, leading them in the same direction toward greater heights, away from the material realm and toward the world of forms. The first love of the body, guided by the dark horse, is transformed by the charioteer reason, with the help of the white horse, spiritedness, overcoming challenges and reaching a love of knowledge, the love of wisdom, which is what the word philosophy means. The soul will not be driven just by the desire for earthly beauty, it will fly high and remember the form of beauty itself. So the relationship of bodily love between the two partners, the primordial desire for the body of the other, will be turned toward the mutual love of knowledge and learning, of learning from one another. But see here, this means that a dark horse is also important. Although on its own it might lead us astray, it is still the energy, the primordial drive, without which we would desire nothing. It only needs good direction. Whichever part of the soul dominates in you, whether it is reason, spiritedness and the higher emotions, or mere desires, this is the kind of person that you will be. And in the end, after you die, your soul will leave your body and be judged, sending it either into an animal body, which is more fit for a soul driven by mere desires, or toward the body of a lover of knowledge. And in the next video we'll see how this theory of the soul and its division into three parts is reflected and used in Plato's political philosophy. Thank you very much and until next time.